just uh, your thoughts. Opening game of the season. Uh, you mentioned coming in, you weren't sure what to expect. Uh, what are some of your takeaways here tonight? Well, I was disappointed with that first half. Um, our organization was was really bad. Uh, you know, we're going to have to have better guard play. Uh, our turnovers led to some really easy baskets the first half. We got out rebounded. Uh, we weren't sharp that first half. We probably fortunate to be down just 11 at halftime. Eugene fought his tail off to, to keep us in the game. So, um, you know, and I thought second half we did some good things, but, you know, our penetration, you know, they're a good defensive team. You know, they were collapsing, and, and we just didn't make very good decisions. You know, I thought we took some bad shots. We could have penetrated and kicked and, you know, just uh, – took some bad shots. So uh, disappointed with that. Um, you know, we came back and won the rebounding after getting off to an awful start. Um, you know, we were, I think, down eight to two at the first TV timeout. They they got after us early and uh, we were just kind of in a shock. And, uh, you know, it, um, it was tough on our freshmen, you know, uh, Luke and, and Jalen look like freshmen, played like freshmen in a, in a game this early. Uh, they had to give us some minutes uh, because of our lack of depth. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, uh, I think we'll get better. You know, I uh, disappointed in our first night out. Uh, you know, we can make all kinds of excuses, and that's why I told the fellows we're not going to. We, we should have had a couple games. We didn't. And, um, you know, this is a tough opener. Um, but we're just, we're just going to have to fight through it. Coach, how about adjusting without Will Richardson with the unfortunate news for him today? Felt like you guys did okay, and how do you get better moving forward without Will? Well, you know, he's going to be out six weeks. Just, you know, heard it in practice and uh, um, got the bad news on Tuesday. And, and uh, we had surgery today. And, and uh, from what I understand, talking, uh, we, we, surgery went really well, but, you know, with surgery, you know, you, six weeks, and uh, and we missed him. You know, we uh, Amari's going to work out fine, and Jalen's going to get better, but uh, they didn't play particularly well tonight. And and uh, you know, Will had been running all the point, you know, in practice, and uh, so it was a quick adjustment. But uh, those two guys will be fine. They'll they'll get better. They just uh, you know, I didn't think they had a a real good night. They had played better in practice. Uh, Dante had played a lot better in practice, and uh, he was really flat tonight, which we just can't have. You know, I mean, uh, we spend too much time in practice getting him the ball, and and for him to come out and uh, uh, not compete uh, uh, that first half, and you know, and then you know, you get out of sync. You know, it's hard to get back into sync, and so I was, you know, I I got after him a little bit because he's a much better player than that, and. Uh, we spend so much time, like I said, in practice working on things for him that uh, when he doesn't give us much in the ball game, uh, that really sets us back. Finally, for me, Coach, uh, just touching on Eugene, you mentioned he played his tail off. 31 points, a career high, 11 rebounds. How good was Eugene tonight? Well, without his physicality and his, you know, him playing like he did, we, whew, he was, he was the, by far the brightest spot competitive-wise, toughness-wise. Um, I mean, he, you know, he, he made up for a lot of guys. Uh, just unbelievable effort, unbelievable effort. Uh, thought he played hard and played well. Coach, thanks for taking the time. A little different doing these with you via Zoom. I know a few others got questions for you. Thanks for the time and look forward to catching up with you on Friday, sir. All righty. All right, we'll open it up now. Let's go to uh, James Krupia from the Oregonian. Dan, to kind of follow that on Eugene, I want to ask you if you could have expected this because this was a career high. But like you say, he made up for some other things. What do you think he's going to be capable of? What do you think you're going to be able to rely on him going forward? Because clearly you've seen he can, he can at least produce, maybe not 31 and 11 every night, but he can really produce for you, clearly. Absolutely. Uh, James, he – He's worked. He's been our hardest worker in practice. Uh, you know, he's done a tremendous job. Uh, I I thought he'd play well tonight, and, and um, he sure did. You know, and uh, you know, a couple things he tried taking charges. You know, he he just tried to do everything for us, and uh, you know, just a really really good effort. Uh, Chris shot the ball okay. Uh, Eric had some nice plays. 
but our lack of depth showed, you know, and, and we, we wore those guys out with Dante not playing like I thought he was capable of, you know, left a big hole in the middle. But uh, uh, to answer your question, I thought Eugene, you know, that's his, his hard nose to performance uh, as we've had from an inside guy in a long time. Matt Preem, uh, 247 Sports. That second half, you, you guys got within five and early on in that first couple of minutes, and then it just a wave came from, from them. You feel like it was just guys getting tired because you mentioned lack of depth or miscommunication defensively? Well, I, I, like thought, was a big I thought we did get tired. You know, um, um, you know, the first TV timeout, they only scored three points. Um, you know, we sold out, you know, and gave them a wide open three. Um uh, you know, we just – defensively, we weren't solid. I, you know, really disappointed there because uh, I thought we – you know, we're not going to be able to give up 83 uh, with the personnel we have right now. I don't think we can give up 83 points and be successful. You know, uh, if we get our whole team together, then I think we can get into more of an up-and-down game and maybe get into 83, 84, 85 points. But the way our team is right now – I think we have to grind out a few more possessions. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got eight scholarship athletes and, you know, two of those freshmen, Luke and Jalen, who haven't played a lot. And so uh, with that group, you know, I, I don't think we can give up 83 points and be successful. So defensively, we're going to have to be a lot more solid. Chris Hansen, Register Guard. Hey, Dan, I had some issues on my end when James had that follow-up question on Eugene, so I apologize if you've already answered this part, but were you surprised at all at, at the level he was able to score at? Did you come into the season thinking that he was going to be that much of a weapon for you offensively? Well, Chris, he, uh, you know, he averaged 13 a game at Rutgers, and, you know, so I, I knew he was going to be a double-figure scorer, um, and so... But no, to answer your question, 31 and, you know, his shoot, I think it was 10 for 19 and, you know, two for six from three. Um, you know, so I, uh, I thought he'd be a good scorer for us. We definitely don't want to rely on him to, to get 31 for us every night. But, you know, I think he could, you know, with that toughness and that ability, offensive rebound putbacks, I mean, he gave it all to us tonight. I mean, from the free throw line, I think he was nine for 11 or whatever. So he got to the line, he got offensive rebounds. He hit a couple threes, Chris. I mean, you know, it was just a great performance. And, you know, like I said earlier, we're, we would have been, whew, we'd have been real toast without him. You know, I mean, he got us back in and in the first half there, got it down to 11 and, you know, he, he really competed. So, uh, um, I knew he'd be a good scorer for us because he works so dang hard and he's trying to improve every facet of his game. So, but, um, you know, he had just a phenomenal night. Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Yeah, Coach, with all that, you still got it down, I think, with seven points with 40 seconds left. You're still in the game, I guess. You take heart in the fact the team didn't give up, although it looked like it might be a blowout at some points. And Eric could have hit a few shots. It looks like he just was off yeah. You know, I was really disappointed if, if we'd have got blown out. I'd, I'd really be disappointed if we wouldn't have competed to the end. You know, we put ourselves in that hole, Jerry, you know, just uh, – and, and that, that's partly my fault. I mean, for us to be that unorganized, you know, that's on me. You know, um, I, I had – I should have had Amari and Jalen better prepared. And, and so that's on me. And um, – uh, you know, we uh, knew Will was going to be a good player for us, you know, and we got surprised at the beginning of the week. But uh, that's on me to not not have better organization that first half. Some of those turnovers, Jerry, were, were just you know, flat embarrassing. You know, I mean, it just I, – I know I can't put it any other way. I, and I told the guys that. I said, fellas, you know, we're, we're tossing the ball around. They're like, we haven't done anything, you know, and, and – uh, I know I'm asking you guys to do a few more different things, but we got to be able to make some adjustments here, you know, because you know, Will's going to be gone for a while, you know, so you guys are going to have to handle the ball more. You're going to have to do different things. So, um, 
you know, and so that's on me. Some of those bad turnovers and, and some of those easy baskets, uh, you know, that that's on me. Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. Dana Pinson is no doubt. He's a great shooter. Those guys really hit the hell out of the three ball in the first half. What what can you do to, to defend better outside on the three? Did you not expect them to shoot so well? Well, uh, you know, 13 has been a, a good shooter for him. Smith has done a good job. You know, and he went three for six tonight. Um, you know, nine for 31, Warren, we can probably live with that. You know, uh, they were six for 21 the first half. They did hit timely ones, though. Uh, as I mentioned, or you guys, we got it down to five there. And then they hit the big one, you know, right before the TV timeout to stretch it back to eight, you know. And uh, so they did hit some timely threes, um, you know, some loose balls, kick out, you know, and hit a three. So, uh, but percentage wise, nine for 31, you know, we're, we're going to be able to live with that. But uh, they did take a lot of them. Um, you know, I thought we, we gave 13 Smith a couple looks that I, you know, we knew the scouting report on him. He's the one guy. But, um, you know, just uh, some bad turnovers again that led to easy baskets. They shot too many layups, guys. And um, a couple defensive rotations on our press, just uh, awful. So, uh, again, you know, it, uh, it looked like a first game. Yeah, it looked like a first game with uh, new point guards. It looked like a first game with a couple freshmen. And so uh, we got a lot of work to do. And uh, that workload increased a lot uh, the next six weeks without Will. And so we're just going to have to work a lot harder and, and put guys in better position and, and see what we can get worked out. Things changed a lot on Monday. James. Dan, on some of those issues, I don't know if you'd heard through Basketball Oversight, but Goodman's just reported uh, before he came on that Basketball Oversight's talking about granting an eligibility waiver for all transfers starting by the 16th, if not if it's voted potentially before that, before that meeting. Given that you have a game Friday and then a game the following Saturday, we've talked about scheduling. Nobody would blame you if you don't play another game until, until the 16th, <laughs> until LJ and Aaron – get cleared I mean you control your fate here and if they're not voting it through till then like your reaction one that you know they're going to be on the court at least in two weeks but obviously you want to see it yesterday do you now think about scheduling differently with that in mind well not really I mean I I didn't know all that James but uh, uh, you know my feelings and I, I expressed this the other day, and it, it's probably self-serving when I talk about transfers since we have two. But we are in a situation, this, this road trip, you know, road trips used to be fun, okay? We'd go, we'd get checked in, we'd have a team meal, okay? And, and we'd sit around and, and, and the guys would enjoy it. And we'd get up and eat team breakfast. And then we had our, our pregame. We've had three uh, meals in plastic that we take to our rooms. And uh, so that's a road trip. But think of school, James. No dates, no eating out, no parties, no, uh, you know, nothing. It's not college. You know, I'd, in 40 years of, of coaching college basketball, I don't think I've ever seen more stress on our players' face than I have this year. I, I don't even think it's close. Uh, they're not having any fun uh, off the floor. Basketball's all they got. And when you have that situation, you know, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of stress on every college student. I, you know, I've been fortunate to have, you know, be around college kids. And I think it keeps me young. It keeps me thinking young. And, but I just, I, I, I just think there's a lot of stress. And so anything we can do to relieve that stress uh, you know, LJ's heartbroken. You know, I mean, he, he, he wanted to play so bad tonight. And um, Aaron's situation's a little different. You know, he, he transferred for the purpose of sitting out. And then, you know, that was the reason. LJ had a lot of reasons. Parents had uh, 
the virus. Uh, he was in New York City, wanted to get out. Um, you know, they had a coaching change the year before. There were a lot of reasons for LJs. So I don't understand that one. But, you know, that's above me. You know, it's complicated, I guess. So um, that's not for me to, to make a judgment on. But I, I do know the stress level on student athletes this year. And, and the NCAA, okay, they make it so that everybody gets the year back anyway. <laughs> they, you know, they have made all these exceptions. We all know where it's going. One-time transfer next year is, is going. Why are we punishing anybody? Now, the scoreboard's about 200 to 7 or 8. There's not that many people. And St. John's agreed to LJ's uh, transfer. So I, I, I don't know why. St. John's has been great. I, I want to make that really clear that St. John's is not holding back LJ. And so I just don't understand. I, I hope that uh, eventually, you know, it would really help us, obviously, with only eight scholarship athletes. Um, you know, if we, if we would get anybody, James, with the virus right now, we, we couldn't even play a game. You know, eight's the minimum that, that you could have. So if one person had the virus right now, we couldn't even play, whether we wanted to or not. So it would be nice to get some more hands on deck. But uh, again, uh, you know, I just want what's best for my guys. And uh, it's, it's, it's a different deal. And, uh, you know, young people under a lot of stress, and like a lot of Americans, you know, with jobs and, you know, careers and everything being put on hold. So our, our student athletes are in the same position. Last question goes to Jerry Thompson. Yeah, coach. Well, again, Missouri had a game. This is your first game, bad first half. Can you take heart in the fact that you actually outscored them, played better in the second half, and can build on that for this next game? Oh, heck, we'll build on a lot of things. You know, I mean, it's a long season. I, those of you followed us before, you know, it's a long season. We, you know, we're, we're, we got five months here yet, you know, and, and we got good guys and they're, they're down in there. And, and I know our fans will be disappointed. Heck, I'm disappointed. We, we should have played better, but, you know, we just, we got to battle back, you know, uh, a lot of our good teams have, have lost games. You know, we we got to we got to go back to work. And uh, when you play 30 games, you know it's about getting better. It's about getting better. And uh, yeah, I'm disappointed we didn't put a better foot forward tonight. And I told them that, you know, because we didn't play hard enough and we weren't ready to go. And we looked unorganized. We were unorganized at the time. We didn't look unorganized. We were unorganized at the time. And that's on me. So we all got to get better. We all have to get better, and we will. We will. And because uh, I, I think we got good guys, and I think they want to be better. And um, uh, we just uh, got to do a lot of work before Friday night, though, because Seton Hall is pretty good, and, and uh, uh, we're going to have to play a heck of a lot better than we did tonight.